Hi, today we're going to take a look at installing Arduino IDE uh, onto a Linux virtual machine. Our first step is to make sure that the Arduino board is recognized by our Windows host computer. This, go ahead and if you have your uh, Arduino board connected to your host computer, go ahead and disconnect it. And then we're going to go ahead and open up the Arduino IDE that's been installed on the Windows host computer. The same process will work on a Linux host computer, but we're working on Windows today. We'll go to Tools and then go to Port, and notice that only COM3 is available. So this is a port that's just there without any boards plugged in. Next, we're going to plug in the board. Once the board is plugged in, we go back to the Tools menu, go to Port, and we should see that a port has been added, in this case, COM4. If we see this port has been added, we know that the board has been um, installed via USB through the host operating system, which is Windows, and that Windows is communicating with the Arduino IDE that it's available. So if it's available in an Arduino IDE, it should also be available inside the VM. Let's go ahead and close the Arduino IDE and then launch our uh, Linux virtual machine. <clears throat> As the virtual machine is starting up, let's take a look at this top bar. So we have to connect the USB to our virtual machine. So, so when we're working with, um, with uh, virtual machines, Basically, what we can do is that we can uh, we can uh, disconnect them from the host and connect them to the virtual machine. So it's available in two places. We can go to player, and we can go to removable devices, and we should see something that looks like a Arduino. So in this case, Win Hung uh, Heng USB serial. That's going to be it. So notice that everything else doesn't look like USB. We only have three devices, so that's the one. We would click Connect, Disconnect. If we go over here, we can also do the same thing from this menu at the top. If we mouse over uh, these icons, it gives us their names. In this case, Quinn Hung, USB Serial. And we're going to go ahead and right-click on it and then click Disconnect from Host. We get a warning, and we're going to go ahead and click OK, then click OK. At this point, the, the icon shows a green dot, and that's how we know that it's been connected to our virtual machine. So let's go ahead and install uh, uh, the Arduino IDE. In general, um, I find it a good idea just to install the, the Arduino IDE first before installing any kind of other development environment, <clears throat> mainly because we're trying to go from simple to more complex and encounter problems early on in the process rather than later on process as we'll talk about in a couple. So inside the VM we're going to go ahead I'm <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and unpin this bar at the top. Okay, so we're inside of um, we're in Google and we're just going to Google uh, install Arduino IDE. Click on download and install Arduino IDE, the very first um, item that comes up in the Google search. <clears throat> we'll go down to Linux. And let's just look at the, pr the procedure. So we're going to download the latest version, find the app image file on your file manager, make the app image file executable. <clears throat> Then we're going to double click uh, that engine file to launch the IDE. If the IDE fails to open, then we know that we need to do the second step, which is to install Fuse. Okay. All right, so I'm going to hit cool down control, click on latest releases, and it downloads just fine. Okay, so our app image is here. Um, we want to go ahead and move this app image to somewhere where we can launch it. It's just going to launch directly. So unlike unlike in a Windows installation, um, basically this this file um, is not going to go anywhere. So basically, it's going to sit wherever you put it. Um, so we're just I'm just going to go ahead and move it onto the desktop. This virtual machine is going to use use be used largely for development. Uh, so it'd be just be nice to have it kind of out and about here. 
Um, you can put it anywhere you like um, in your documents folder. I wouldn't put it in the downloads folder just because of the fact that you might want to empty that out from time to time. Um, so I'm just going to make it a little bit of a shorter name and then close. The next thing we need to do, we can, um, we can uh, uh, change the uh, permissions for this executable in our terminal. Uh, in this case, though, we're just going to go ahead and right click on it and click properties, then permissions, and then we're going to click on allow executing file as program and then close. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and just double click the file. Okay, so it opens up just fine. Uh, when it first opens up, you might see a message saying that it's installed. It's installing quite a few things. Um, I've already installed this once on this virtual machine, so I'm not seeing some of the messages that might come up on yours, but everything should be fine at this point. We're going to go ahead and close it, and then we're going to go and we're going to just do a few things just to make sure that your installation is working. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal. The first thing is that we're going to... Um, we're going to install the libfuse2 anyways, so uh, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> so we're going to add, uh, we're going to preface all of these with sudo, sudo, and then I'm just going to copy and paste here, control C to copy and control shift V to paste into the terminal. So we're going to add the, um, the uh, repository universe. Mine was already added, so you may see other messages here. Then we're going to go ahead and update our software. So we use control copy for update, control shift B to paste into the terminal. Should put sudo in front of that. And copy here. And now we're going to go ahead and upgrade all the software on a computer. This might take a few minutes. You should not interrupt this process. So if you're on if you're on a very slow connection and you don't want to upgrade the software on your computer right now or on your virtual machine right now, skip this step. Okay, so if you're on a fast connection, you have a couple of extra minutes just to make sure everything works right, uh, go ahead and do this step. Okay, mine was already upgraded just, just you know, yesterday. So, uh, so nothing happened on mine. Yours might download quite a lot of software at that point. Okay, do not, uh, do not in interrupt that process. Wait until it completes, even if you have to leave the thing running and leave the computer. <clears throat> okay, next we're going to go ahead and, and install this libfuse2 just, just to be sure it's on there. So we copied it. We're going to uh, control shift C to paste. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to go ahead and add your user that you're using right now to the dial-up group. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. Okay, the reason why we're copying this if you notice here, um, uh, if we list all of our, so basically with this uh, with this command here, I went ahead and listed all the connections that are available on the computer. <clears throat> and if you notice the, um, the the group that is in control of this uh, of these connections is this dial up group, sorry dial out group, dial out at TTY here. Okay, so what we're doing in this case is that we're adding our user into that group. Okay, so we're going to do it twice. We're going to add the user into to to dial out, and we're going to add the user into TTY. Okay, so all right. So I'm just going to copy this command. So user mod uh, space dash a space dash capital G space the name of the group which is dial out and then my username so in this case the username I'm logged in under is robot so whatever your username is whatever you know whatever your login name is that's the name you should put there 
put sadu in front of it. Sorry about that. Okay, we're going to do the same exact thing. I hit the up arrow to get the previous command. We're going to, we're going to remove dial out here, and we're just going to put tty instead. So the tty group, and add, uh, we're going to add our user group. Okay, now these two things do not take effect until we log out and log back in. And then finally, the last command we're going to run is this apt remove brl tty. And what this is, is it's a piece of software on the computer that blocks the USB from being, uh, from connecting to the proper USB port. So essentially what will happen is if you don't, if you don't remove this piece of software, um, when you plug in the computer, basically the Arduino IDE or other development environments will not see your board. Okay, so this is an absolutely necessary step. So so do apt remove URL TTY. I'm not sure which Linux distributions this is on. It's probably on, um, uh, the majority of recent uh, Ubuntu desktop uh, distributions as well as Linux Mint distributions, so it might be other places as well. Uh, it's a Braille reader. It has something to do with Braille. It's not going to be used by most people unless you are um, sight impaired. Uh, so, so it's pretty safe to remove. So, so do apt remove URL TTY. All right, so that um, I already removed it, so it says mine was not installed, um, but now it's been removed anyways. Okay, the next, uh, uh, but yours should say that it's been removed or that it's not present. All right, so we made, we've made we um, made changes to the membership groups of our user. So we're just going to go ahead and, um, and uh, log out and log back in at this point. So, and that way when we log back in, our, uh, our, uh, Users group membership will be updated, and we should be able to connect to our at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and launch our Arduino IDE. Okay, we're going to uh, File, Examples, Basics, Blink, Classic Blink. We're going to go to Tools. Um, you should see port. If you if you didn't do the user mod command that we just did, this port would be blanked out because we, we wouldn't have access to it. Um, there are other reasons why it wouldn't be there, but you should see TTY USB zero. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Go to tools, go to board, and then whatever board you plugged in. Okay, so basically in this case, I'm using a, a vanilla Arduino Uno, and then we're going to try to upload. So uh, go ahead and click upload. You may not see this messaging, so uh, so what you're looking for here, you may not see this. I added some um, uh, additional messaging in preferences. You'll see something more like uh, this. So you'll see something more like this. So it's done compiling. It'll upload, and then what you're looking for is the uh, So true to form, um, or do we know it worked the first time and then it's not working the second time? I'm going to go ahead and um, and plug it, unplug it, and plug it back in, as they say. Uh, back to tools. Set USB zero. Where does our Arduino go? Upload. Okay, in this case, done uploading. Um, so there we have it. Uh, it was good to see that last step. Um, as you know, these these systems, um, you know, it's it's open source software, open source board. Um, some of the, you know, there, there's going to be some glitches. There's going to be some uh, some um, some uh, some problems, but in the end, it'll all work out. So uh, that's the process. We got our Arduino ID up and running inside of our Linux virtual machine. Uh, best of luck.